My name is Katarzyna Darongowska and I work as a leadership engagement officer at IWA. And uh, I am very pleased uh, to open the second day of our Emerging Water Leaders Virtual Forum 2021. Today we're gathering for a workshop session and we are after the first day of online panel discussions with expert uh, panelists, whereas uh, for the first session, we welcomed uh, Desigen Naidu, uh, Jennifer Muller Gallant, as well as Professor Dong Xin. For the second session, we, we had a pleasure to speak with June Kin Lopez with Valid Corey and uh, Dr. Siddhartha Rai. We came to certain reflections, to certain conclusions, so many pieces of information, so many pieces of inspiration. Some of the highlights that we wanted to refer to for today's session is to communicate, uh, in order to communicate water through water risk angle, is to assess water risks holistically, to identify pain points for governments and companies if the water remains un unaddressed and target your communication, push the, push the right button buttons, do not hold back, and also realize that social media requires vulnerability that very often is not shared. And uh, it, in order to really connect with others, it's important to tell your story, to establish deep connections, and, and establish a network of champions. We also need to address the mistrust and misinformation we need to be honest. Don't be afraid to be wrong uh, when it comes to sharing certain pieces of information. And then when it comes to public interactions and sharing your viewpoints, it's good to always be backed up by data, which uh, builds your courage to express your thoughts. And also we concluded that it's difficult to build trust of general public and it's very easy to lose it. Uh, not to discourage you all as we are today gathering to talk about communications, to, to, to talk about the ways how we can really navigate through the overall of pieces of information that we receive these days. And, uh, and we want to get together to have thought-provoking discussions, to see really how we as young water professionals can navigate through all of that. Let me share with you a new housekeeping information before I uh, proceed with introducing you to our lovely facilitator. Uh, I'm quite sure that so many of us are very well um, equipped with the knowledge of uh, Zoom. But I wanted to mention that if you wanted, if you needed to share your viewpoints, make sure to unmute yourself. Also, this session will be recorded and uh, possibly shared. And uh, I would love to encourage you all as we are having uh, two amazing guest speakers who will be introduced uh, very shortly uh, to write any questions in the chat box. Don't be a stranger. Say hello, say where you're from, and uh, also connect, network. Use this uh, lovely virtual space to connect with your peers, to share your LinkedIn profiles, to share your IWA profiles. So let me now introduce you to our uh, workshop sessions uh, moderators and facilitators. As Today comprises of two sessions. These three characters here are lovely young photo professionals. And this session will be uh, coordinated and facilitated by Hugh J. Liu, uh, whom you can now see. And Hugh J. is a part of Emerging Water Leaders Steering Committee, uh, being in charge of professional development uh, offerings to uh, young water professionals. And also she's a part of organizing committee of this forum. Uh, and she will be today uh, leading the session. Please, Hugh J., give a warm welcome to everyone who has joined us and uh, let us begin the workshop session. Uh, my name is Hui Jie Lu. Uh, I'm a research professor at Zhejiang University in China. Um, and also I'm a member of the Emerging Water Leaders Steering Committee, 
2020 to 2022. Uh, I'm very excited to facilitate this session with the support uh, from Carcia. So thank you, Carcia, very much. Uh, I'm very glad to see the participants from uh, all over the world. Um, for those who have attended the first days uh, of the forum, I hope you can uh, enjoy the second day of the forum as well. So uh, as well, young water professionals, we uh, acquire a lot of information from the internet, but sometimes we feel we are information overload. So how can we navigate uh, through a great amount of information this will be an interesting topic to discuss at our workshop. Uh, I think it's even more important to think critically and come up with our own opinions based on the information we, uh, we received. So it's a great pleasure to uh, introduce our two guest speakers today uh, who will share their experience reporting what stories as media professionals and give their thoughts on these uh, questions. So uh, can you turn to the second page? Okay, so here are the uh, three questions I just mentioned. How can young water professionals navigate through a great amount of information? How can we develop critical thinking as well as our own informed opinions? The third question will be, can we, can these opinions contribute to the stories of water sector for the general public? Okay, uh, the, our first speaker is uh, Case uh, Hayward. He's the IWA Director of Marketing and Communications uh, and also the Source Magazine publisher. He will be discussing what makes for effective communications uh, as water professionals. Uh, so I guess I will uh, welcome our first speaker, uh, Kate. Hello, Kate. Hello there, it's great to be here. Thanks, Eugene, and uh, thanks, Cassia. Yeah, welcome to the workshop session. We look forward to your presentation. So dear audience, if you have any questions during Keith's uh, presentation, so please feel free to tap that down in the chat box and I will ask your questions uh, uh, to Keith afterwards. So Keith, please feel free to start your presentation. Thank you. Uh, well, that's great. Thank you so much, UJ. Um, and it, you know, it really sounds like you've been covering some great things, uh, and already that you've got a, a, an excellent understanding indication. So, I hope I can add to that and and prime you for your your workshop today. I'll I'll share some thoughts on the, the basic but important aspects of communication. Uh, then I'll say a little, you know, about this subject of water that is so important to all of us. And then talk to you about the Source magazine, which is IWA's membership magazine. Plus, I'll add a, a few extra thoughts that I hope will be of value to you all. So, just what makes effective communications? You know, the first thing is that communication is not something you can do on your own. We're talking about a message between one person and another. Something's only communicated if it reaches the other person and if, if they understand it and if they understand it in the way that you intended it. So if you're communicating, the real priority is for you to think about your audience. You've got to know their audience, who they might be, what their values might be, what their interest might be. And in some respects, you, you could think of two types of, of audiences. They, these might be new people you're trying to connect with, but they might be people already in your audience or in your community. But I mean, even if you know people, in both cases, you're fighting for their attention. This is now, now more so than ever with the so many sources around. So um, once you've got your audience in mind, from there, you can then start to think about how you engage them, how you might want them to respond. And I think here, there's perhaps two different types of audiences that are particular of interest. Uh, we can think of the general public and we can think of a, a, a professional audience. Now, in both cases, the aim is that if you want to communicate, what you deliver has got to be accessible, it's got to be understandable, so you really then start to think about the, the language of your audience, their, perhaps their education, their, their background, their interests. And once you've got all of that in mind, 
you can then actually start to connect with them and engage them. And to do this, you've got to give them a reason to read or to watch or to listen. Listen. Now, that could be an initial aspect, such as how it's presented, the, the headlines that you use, the subject that it's presented as covering, some kind of hook to get people um, engaged. Your message, certainly you've got to have some clarity in mind. And then for the content itself, you know, what is it that you're, you've got to say? What is it you want to, to talk about? And, and here, really, I would say the main thing is that you want to try to tell a story. That is, and I, I expect this is something that the, the next speaker will pick up on, but really it's important that you think in terms of, of telling some kind of story. And so these are just some of the very basic thoughts on communicating. And I know that you've got to note that you can keep these same things in mind when you have the workshop later, because when you're evaluating sources, think about who was this aimed at? What, what might have been their motivations for publishing? What, what is it that they were trying to communicate? So you can use these, turn this back around the other way when you're evaluating sources as well. Um, now, a bit about water. Is it, is it any different? Um, now, all the things I've just said really certainly apply to water, but is there something different about water? For me, if there's one thing, it's the diversity. And it's almost there's no such thing as, as water. You, you can't think of it as a single thing. We have water supply, we've got nature, we've got flooding. There's, there's always different uses, different dimensions and it, this is what makes water fascinating for me it's why I've written about it for more than 30 years you've got aspects such as the politics the government health um but that means we're in a fortunate position I've got so many possible ways of connecting with with audiences um now to connect with them this can be potential to use words and pictures and and ideas and when you certainly when you're look, thinking about the general public, you've got imagery that can connect with people's lives, their, their values, their religion. Um, everyone has their own connection with water, especially uh, around nature. So you can really connect at a personal level. Um, for a professional audience, and especially for an international one, is for me. I always it's really thinking about what travels what can have relevance, and then this is, comes back to knowing uh, your audience. So this, this can be science and innovation, this can travel, um, but environmental impacts and concerns and the ways people's lives are impacted. And of course, global policy that's driving action. These are things that communicate, um, you can communicate about across boundaries. So if I take that now to, to think about the source, we're clearly talking about a professional audience here, and this is people who've got their working lives based around water. And you know, we're people, they, we could be shocked and angered by water problems uh, and injustice. And this may be central to your own work. I think you've either heard or will heard from Sid Roy. This is a good, he's a great example of someone working on a really emotive issue in, in his work to do with the Flint water crisis. Um, when it comes to source, professional audience, we're talking about the International Water Association, and which for us here is a membership organization. And when you start to have your critical reading of sources in the, in the, in the workshop, you then need to think about the, the publisher, what, was, what were the motivations of the publisher? They could be commercial, they could be a campaigning NGOs out to effect some change. Um, you then have perhaps editorial motivations. What are the values that are being applied? I mean, newspapers um, have different political directions or, or leanings that appeal to different groups of people. Uh, what's, what's the role of advertising? Uh, in journals, you have the peer review process that uh, shapes the editorial content. Um, now, so for IWA and back to the source, IWA is the publisher. So it's really worth reflecting that IWA is, a, of course, a registered charity, it exists for charitable purposes. And so the aims are to educate and to raise awareness. 
And those, those are articulated in IWA's vision and mission. The vision is of a network of water professionals striving for a world in which water is wisely, sustainably and equitably managed. And the mission is to promote knowledge and provide agenda setting leadership for the goal for the global water community. So there's key things here. It's about inspiration, about leadership, and it's also about a network of people. So one role I have is to transfer that through to the source. Um, so that's, we want the source to be a tangible benefit that's received by every member. It's got a real role in the coherence and the shaping and communicating of IWA's role. And then in addition to that, they will have some editorial values about some independence and integrity, um, certainly science led the support things sort supported by sound science. And these are all editorial values that are in tune with IWA uh, and also aiming just to create a product that's got real value in its own right. Now, I think in the workshop later, you have an example to, article from the source to look at. So I won't say too much about that, but you look for yourselves and you clearly think that the source is about providing leadership, inspiration, authority, that which isn't neutral, but so there are some values behind what gets published, various values, and you might want to reflect on that as you look at the sources. Um, so just to recap, uh, for communication, you've got to know your audience, engage them, give them a reason to read and watch and listen and have a clear message and tell a story. Um, and when you're looking at a source, think about what the motivations were. For water, there's diverse opportunities to connect and really think about what travels. And for the source here, it's, it's about IWA's vision and mission to inspire and leadership and having a membership um, network that we're catering for. Um, now, I thought it'd be useful just to add a couple of points to that. One is the about the um, media and understanding media interests and how to get media coverage. Now, this isn't new. In fact, I looked at this in detail in the run up to the uh, the World Summit of Sustainable Development in 2002. I spoke to some, some key people even then, um, someone called Peter Adamson, who launched the New Internationalist magazine. And it really said, you've got to have the briefest form possible to get your, down to your, your message down to the briefest form possible and really focus on communicating that. I spoke to an ac academic in the UK and um, it's, it's important to anticipate the water is complex, but the media will often pick up that on that in a way that focuses on individuals. And I also spoke with um, Tracy Osborne of the World Bank Institute and this was setting up a network to engage interested reporters. And there is the opportunity to tap into genuine interest in, in the media. Um, and at that same time, I also evaluated the, a year's worth of environmental coverage in an influential UK newspaper just give some thought on news agendas here is that um, even then atmosphere related and especially climate change news was um, dominated environmental coverage but it was also dominated by sort of land related issues and, and that was in fact in that year there was a big foot and mouth disease outbreak in the UK so it's not something you can plan for and we see that today um, with COVID there is a the news agenda um, has to follow what, what is happening out there in the world. Um, but um, clearly we see that with climate change and um, today. And so to work, you've got to work with those sort of agendas to, to really highlight water's relevance. I think that's the, the lesson from that. Um, and then just finally, one other area I thought it'd be useful to pick up on is about your own individual roles as communicators. Um, the big difference today certainly with compared to 2002 is that um, you know, thanks to social media, you can communicate directly with your audience. So that means you are the publishers, you are the source. Um, now there's, there's challenges around digital world, there's information overload and how we all interact with each other. But there's great opportunities and you can create your own space. So I really encourage you to think about your own values and about what space you want to occupy and how you want to be in that space. And here is a, a, a book I've, um, I've 
seen over the years I quote from is um, a book called How to Thrive in the Digital Age by Tom Chatfield. And his quote is, we must learn not simply to share, but to share well and to participate in the digital commons with the kind of integrity that breeds integrity in others. So when you think about your role here, I'd urge you to read, for example, there's a book by Peniel Ingelson on water stewardship by IWA Publishing that um, is available open access. And it's about your personal journey of what it means to be a water steward. Um, so to close, you know, you have an important role to play as the emerging water leader community. And so you really go out and communicate on water. Uh, it's not only it's fascinating and a diverse area, I mean, it relates to really urgent issues of our time. So that's the end of my presentation. But I'll just add a, a, about your next speaker. You'll hear from um, Max Fry of BBC Global News. And the IWA and BBC Global News announced recently that we're working in an exciting partnership in which BBC Global News will explore water issues and solutions to these issues. And the content will be hosted on BBC's global platform and will feature mini documentary series. So, and as a global authority, IWA is working closely with the BBC to help shape this content. Um, so um, there's a whole editorial communications process behind this. And I think this is what Max will share with you. Um, and with that, so thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Keith, for your wonderful talk. Um, just for those uh, who uh, joined a little bit late, I just want to uh, highlight uh, three key points that Keith just uh, uh, mentioned. The first one is uh, know your audience. The second one is water is diverse, water is interdisciplinary. And the third one is he mentioned the, uh, the role of source uh, at IWA is communicating uh, IWA's mission and uh, uh, the value. So he also gave us a, a lot of practical suggestions uh, afterwards. So I, uh, Kate, I saw uh, at least one question from our audience. Uh, that question is from uh, Yang Leila. Hi, I saw you were in, tur you turned on your video. So thank you for joining. And uh, um, the next question is, I love the idea of defining the values that drive shape the message. What are the implicit value of source that may not be apparent to the casual readers? So Keith, would you like to uh, give a short answer to that question? Yeah, I, I would say that those are some of the, the, the items that I just really, really listed there because, um, I mean, the, the, the sort of things that I take for granted and um, trying to communicate IWA's vision and mission is a, it's not something that you would necessarily want to um, put at the top as a, as a statement on every article. It's, it's, it has to be much more subtle and much more in the background. I think that um, aspects such as you know, sound science is you, you all there's a whole editorial process behind that of, of who I would choose to speak to who you interview who you go to um, and I'm in a great position in the IWA network in that uh, people involved with specialist groups for example clearly have um, invested their careers in focusing on particular particular areas now so in some ways it makes it easy to know you're going to an authoritative source but it nonetheless it's um it is an important aspect of considering who you talk to why you talk to them and and what you you put out in the in the article that you're producing so um i think that those those strong always think about who it is i'm speaking to who who it is is the voice who's uh, who's dealing with a particular issue um, those I'd say are some of the important values of, of that are there. They aren't necessarily explicit, but they're there um, behind the scenes and everything. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, we have another question from uh, Naiti Jadadja. Uh, 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 I apologize if I, if I pronounced uh, incorrectly of your name. Uh, so her question is, please share more about means for scientists to communicate with the general audience. 
So I'm also from the inter, uh, from academia. So I have a, a similar question as uh, uh, Lati. So, uh, Case, do you have any suggestions on this? Well, I, I, I think that you, you would always bring it back to the specific example and opportunity. I, I, it, it depends if you are, if there's an opportunity to talk into a newspaper, if there's an opportunity to just write about a piece of work that you're putting out into, into through social media, is that to people who know you? Is it something that's general? So um, it's much more valuable to think, to look at the individual opportunity in the individual case of where you're trying to have an impact. Um, so you will you will always want to um, you know, so that will always mean there's a slightly different audience. there's that will mean there's a slightly different opportunity to um, have that hook, have that catch. different things um, will catch people's attention. you've got different, Clearly, if you're trying to communicate with uh, with pictures, that it's a different way of approaching things with words. So, um, I, I mean, when I I get so many, I mean, so my career has been based around um, talking to scientists, working with them for their articles that they produce. Now, so my specific example is often around the magazine and. Um, it, 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 you know, time and again, I'd say that the, the 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 key points often get buried. They don't. It's not that they're wrong, but if you're coming from a training where you have a standard approach for producing a, a, a paper, for example, um, that doesn't lend itself to um, catching people's attention in the same sort of way. So I, th I think you've just got to step back. Um, and put yourself in the minds of the person that you're trying to, you, you think you're trying to connect with. Uh, and that won't, as I say, that won't always be a um, everyone. You, you have to sometimes bring it back to specific people that you're trying to trying to reach, who you're trying to share your, your thoughts with and um, yeah, bring your really trying to bring out really the essence of what it is you're trying to communicate. OK. Thank you, Keith. I think because of our tight schedule, uh, we will, uh, it's a pleasure to have you in our session. So uh, we will continue to ask questions in the in the in the chat box. Um, but we, it's time to welcome our uh, second speaker, uh, who is uh, Max Fry. So Max is uh, a partner manager at BBC Global News. IW and BBC have collaborated together to showcase a number of short water-related document, documentaries on online platforms. Uh, Max uh, has pre-recorded his presentation and he will bring us uh, his opinion on how to critically engage with different media sources about water topics. Well, thanks for the very kind introduction. Um, it's an absolute pleasure to be here. And of course, thanks to all of you uh, watching and listening. And of course, the wider team at the IWA for having me speak today for the next few minutes and introduce the upcoming workshop. So the team asked me here today to quickly introduce the notion of how water becomes a story. And what better way to do this than to speak from my experience working at the BBC and specifically on a project that BBC Global News are working on with the IWA. Now, quick introduction to me. My name is Max Fry. I'm a partner manager here at Programme Partnerships, which is part of BBC Global News. And when we set up a series, it's my role to take an incredibly broad view of it to make sure that we really include an equitable spread of geographies, organisations and contributors. To explain BBC Global News quickly, just in the context of the BBC, that's really everything outside of the UK. So all of the BBC.com sites, the news sites, and of course, and importantly, BBC World Service. Now, we have a huge viewership and certainly one that we are incredibly proud of. Uh, we have 468 million weekly viewers. But importantly, 155 million of those are online around the globe. And those are important to me, really, for two reasons. Firstly, 
because me and the team create content specifically for bbc.com, so for that 155 million global browsers. But for the wider BBC, why they're important is that we can track their behaviours, attitudes and interests over time and ultimately produce for them the content and type of stories that they want to see. And of course, that audience data has been crucial in informing us on our decision to develop this series on one of the most precious resources in the world, water. Now, very quickly, we're part of BBC Studios, which is the creative part of the BBC responsible for the Blue Planet, Top Gear, Strictly Come Dancing and Doctor Who series. But what we're creating here is cinematic mini documentary series. And that's really what me and the team do. We want to create visually strong, attention grabbing, compelling and in-depth series on topics that matter, but perhaps don't reach the breaking headlines. A lot of what we make at the BBC, of course, is very snackable. Uh, we tend to talk in headlines. We tend to talk in breaking news as one of the globe's uh, leading broadcasters. But I can tell you that there is a desire across BBC Global News to make more in-depth content about the issues that are truly shaping society. And we are absolutely thrilled to be creating this series on water. More specifically, the clean, secure, efficient, circular, equitable production, use and reuse of water. So there's a lot to cover. We all know the vital significance of water in our lives. It's historically shaped where we've settled as humans. Um, it's, of course, key to our health and most recently our hygiene. Of course, I hope that we've all in this group been relentlessly washing our hands over the past year and a half. To put it simply, water is a requirement for life. But most of us aren't aware of the challenges in supplying safe and secure water. And it's media's responsibility and global leaders' responsibility to get this information out to the public to incite positive change. Perversely, many of us take water for granted. Many of us in this room will be able to turn on a tap after this call and have access to safe, clean water to drink and wash in. But of course, it's hard to forget that 2.1 billion people across the world lack access to adequate water services. And in turn, this means that this is possibly one of the most important series that I'll ever work on, certainly and one of the most important topics in the world right now. But the good news, and pardon the pun, the tide is changing. People want to know more, and the BBC release surveys every month to find out about what our audience are interested in. A huge number of them are actively reducing their water use. Respondents also said that reducing their water use is more of a priority for them than taking other steps, for example, such as changing energy suppliers, using digital meters or buying energy efficient home appliances. Finally, a large number of respondents and almost most importantly, are interested and in clicking through to stories about the oceans and about water. So with this series, we can really capitalize on that interest and build a real sort of broad and in-depth understanding of what the pressures of climate change, population growth and an aging infrastructure might mean. But crucially, chart those creative solutions at every stage of the water cycle. And that's really one of the storytelling techniques that we adhere to at program partnerships. It's not only giving context to the issues that matter, telling them in an effective manner, but we want to be able to pose solutions and at that scalable and accessible solutions for our viewers who can make a change. Now, hopefully we'll be creating a dedicated bbc.com site for water so that millions of BBC browsers globally in 2022 can access that and learn about trending water issues. I think ultimately, you know, not just the BBC, not just me and me and our team, but I think we should all want audiences to appreciate water better as a resource. We're very lucky. We have an engaged and curious viewership, but we need them to be involved in the conversation around the sustainable future of water and sanitization. We want a water wise world, as does everyone in this Zoom call. 
And I hope this series and other big broadcasters can play a part in making that happen. Now, of course, the partnership with the IWA is absolutely vital to us. And in terms of what we believe will make a difference in how media portrays such important global topics, such as water, we, we believe in three main things when when telling a story and of course it's not limited to these three there are lots of things that go into creating a good relatable piece of content but i'll take you through the following when going in depth on themes you need expert guidance and that's why we work with organizations such as the water association in order to lend us their credibility and knowledge expert knowledge on a topic whenever you're reading something always check the source and the validity of what you're reading The accuracy of what we produce is absolutely paramount in order for it to be heard. So by that I mean we want to give the audience actionable, interesting facts they can go away and take to their work, to their friends and so on and so forth in a relatable way. But perhaps most important of all, we want to uncover the most compelling stories and of course characters to tell those stories on screen and find innovative ways in order to make content relatable and accessible to our viewers. And that last point is absolutely crucial. We specifically use character-led storytelling as a technique in relating to our audience, because in my opinion, without strong, powerful, relatable ways in order to tell a story, it's very hard to create real and meaningful engagement. And that leads me on to my final point. In this call, we have a room full of brilliant, exciting minds, future leaders of the water industry. And if you have any suggestions of topics you'd like to see featured in this series or that you'd like to see the BBC pay more attention to in water, please feel free to let me know. I would love to hear from you all. I've asked the organisers to share my email with everyone, but for those of you who have a pen and paper in front of you, it's max.fry at bbc.com. Have a tremendous conference. Thank you very much for listening and enjoy the upcoming task. Although Max is not here, but I would like to uh, thank him for his uh, his sharing. I think I have learned a lot of useful information. He mentioned nowadays it becomes more than more important than ever that the media can communicate water challenges and issues to the general public. And BBC and other media, they will not only be the storytellers, but also uh, they are trying to like uh, uh, suggest solutions to these challenges. And during the process, they need help from a professional organization such as IWA and uh, uh, the, the young water professionals as well. So if you're interested in uh, telling him a story or you're interested in being part of his uh, his uh, uh, documentary series in next year. So please free to contact him. He left his uh, um, email address at the end. So um, are we supposed to have a Kiwi session as well? So, uh, or uh, we should move on to the next uh, part. Right. Well, that very much depends if our lovely participants still have any any further questions. I guess Keith would be the top point, uh, the guru of all of the all of the incoming questions. But please feel free to use this opportunity uh, while Keith is still here with us, as uh, his schedule is very filled up. So he is joining us only for a part of this meeting, and uh, once we uh, end the Q and A session, he will be coming back to and arrangements for the rest of the day. So please feel free to speak out, unmute yourself. We see Michelle, perhaps Michelle has any questions, please feel yes. free to do it. Um, and also I encourage you all to turn on your cameras as um, it would be really lovely to, to see your faces and hear, hear you out as well. Thank you so much, Michelle. Yes, I have maybe a, one more question for Keith. Um, I'm from Belgium and sometimes in the media here in Belgium, um, we can see that awareness about global warming and and water awareness is getting more and more attention. But what we see is that it's uh, mostly driven um, based on a way to scare a bit people. Uh, What do you think of that? Is that also a kind of pressure that you feel um, on your side to, to 
bring stories more from a scary side or yeah how do you handle that well i i handle it largely from the perspective that um, we are a membership organization of people whose job it is is to um, act and implement solutions on water now we could we could spend all of our time pointing to all the things that are are, are failing and aren't being done right and the problems and that is there's a absolutely hugely important issues this is why i pointed to the example example of you know, sidroy the highlighting problems in flint you know there are massive issues and i think that um where we do pick up on from something that you would say is a, a classic um, newspaper news story we would still want to be trying to understand well what is it that went wrong what are the lessons what are the what can we learn from this um and but then more generally it's to um we, we are people who are invested in trying to find solutions so it's not to avoid the big problems that there are uh it, it is really genuinely just to try to explore um uh, the the focus on what what is what can be done about it how can we sort this out and the source is a specific example it's for it's a magazine comes out four times a year with um, um a, a relatively small number of features so what brings this group of people together is a desire to act and a desire to um to to make change and and, and it you, it's like that is why we are here um we can be reminded a bit of what we're doing wrong but we are also invested in trying to, to make things better. What are the solutions, sharing the best ideas? So I think that's that what's informed, that's what informs where we're coming from from the source. But clearly the the, the big problems that there are in the world um, you know, deserve a, deserve attention. And um the media, the typical classic media agenda is that um to put pressure on um governments in particular to um to to show why they are not doing what they are supposed to be doing it's a different kind of pressure um it, it still can have a, a positive motivation behind it it is it's still a call for change just applying um it in a pressure in a different way well thank you keith and uh, i understand that you have a very busy schedule so um thank you very much it was a pleasure. Thank you to you all and have a, have a really great rest of the workshop. Oh, let's move on to our next activity on the agenda, which is the group discussion. Uh, let me first uh, explain the rule of the session. We'll break out into three groups. In the breakout room sessions, we'll have uh, two parts. The first part, uh, you will be given 20 minutes to discuss the five pieces of resources we shared last week by email. There is one, uh, one um, article from the uh, source magazine, uh, one article uh, blog, and one podcast, one video, YouTube video, and the other one is a scientific article. So during the first part, please, uh, after we, we break out into rooms, so please tell your team members uh, what are the main takeaways and what make these uh, uh, documents uh, effective sources, in your opinion? Uh, I would also like to inform you that each group, please designate a, spoke, uh, a spokesperson at the beginning. And this person will give a three minute summary at the end of this uh, part one. Um, so the part one will be uh, 20 minutes. So Carcia will help us to break out into uh, rooms. So um, we will gather together after uh, 20 minutes, but before you move on to uh, your, your individual room, so please uh, take a picture or a, a screen uh, shot of the, uh, yes, the, the questions we're going to discuss after we come back. So first, what are the takeaways? What make these effective sources? And the other critical readings you would like to share? Yes, uh, thank you so much, Hugh Jay. And uh, just one little thing for me to add is uh, that um, just in case, if you needed any support from uh, my side or Hugh Jay's side, we will be staying in the main room.
So uh, you can let us know. Once you are in the breakout room, you can then gift a sign that you, you need some support. So we'll try to be there. And then also we will try to communicate with you about the timing. Hopefully you have wonderful discussions. And uh, so I'm going now to break everyone out to the rooms and uh, hope you have wonderful time talking together. Hello everyone, welcome back. I think everybody, everybody has come back. So welcome back. Oh, I believe you all had a, a lively discussion with your group about the given resources. Um, I believe you have learned a lot from each other. So now let's invite uh, three spokespersons from our uh, three groups. I don't know who you are, but um, please tell the rest of us the main takeaways from your group discussions. And before that, please kindly introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm Tohid and Abu Tohid, and I'm from the group one. Feel free to summarize your discussions. Okay, so from our group, uh, I will share one article. I'll share the insights from one article, and Rona will share the other one. So if, if that's okay, because we'll, we'll, we too will be sharing our insights. Sure. First one, I'd like to talk about the LinkedIn article. Uh, the headline was the crisis of crises. So the main thing that is uh, very uh, connected, uh, I made a good connection with the article because it, it is uh, it, it is mostly on the focusing on the integrated approach uh, to the to solve the water supply uh, management because we, we lack of it in in all the ways because when you think that we, we have a water uh, shortage of water supply, we just think to give a pipe connection and uh, just uh, install a motor and that's all. But that's not all, all actually. We need to do work on the whole hydrological sector. So there is a quotation in the article which uh, which is very uh, good connection, make, make a very good connection. That is, uh, when human interfere, intercept or altogether alter that natural cycle, especially in, in significant and compounding ways, as in mega cities, we are sure to cause disability. So the El Nino has affected the lowest water level in the dam and it has causes a massive shortage of water supply so the main takeaway is the same thing that we need to approach in an integrated way so that we consider all the aspects uh, that is related to the water cycle and water sector and take care of it and what make these effective sources uh, uh, i think uh, uh, the these sources are uh, effective because uh, these are uh, multinational and we, we, we just uh, most of the time we just think of our country we just see like in Bangladesh where the we are uh, the lowest basin of the GBM basin we, we are the lowest country uh, at the uh, like through our country all the water of Ganges, Brahmaputra uh -huh. and Meghna basin go to the Bay of Bengal so when the upper upper end countries so think, of, think of themselves so the lower uh, riparian countries are suffer a lot so we should think of it as an integrated way, as a basin, as a, a river management. And we didn't discuss any other readings, uh, but we'd love to, if you have enough time, uh, where uh, we already run short shortage of time. So I think if we're given enough time, we would like to discuss on more articles. Thank you. I'll, I'll now hand over to Rana. Hello, so I'm Rana Krashen. Um, and so I looked into the other article, which was on the IWA, the source. I think that was the title of the blog. Uh, it was on the intermittent water supply. And um, it basically summarized, uh, the main takeaway is it summarized what the intermittent water supply problem is in a theoretical sense, but also with a practical example. And I think that itself makes it a very effective source of information. And as someone from South Asia who has faced intermittent water supply and who sees it on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, I felt like the article was very relatable, which helped um, make it more effective as a source of information. So the audience factor as was being discussed earlier. Um, and another thing was it also talked about the, it was a very interdisciplinary perspective, not just technically on non-revenue water or pipe systems or water quality, but it was more holistic, such as human side, psychological aspects were also included. And I think that was also a very interesting 
way to think about it. And as someone who has faced this issue in person before, um, it also grounded it to a more theoretical way of thinking about it. Uh, so that's why I felt like it was a very effective resource for information. Thank you. Uh, who would uh, be willing to tell us your what what your group have uh, arrived uh, during this uh, breakout room discussions? Sure. I'm I'm happy to deliver the message Hi, from Hello. room two. Hi, Hui Jay. Um, and our group was myself, Niti, and Maria. We had a very lively and engaging discussion. On the first question about our main takeaways, there was consensus that all three of us felt like there's still a lot to be done. All of these problems are so complex and interconnected, and therefore they require systemic and holistic solutions. But just because we experience these problems um, uh, commonly doesn't mean that they have to be uh, blanket solutions. They still have to be appropriate, uh, fit for purpose. And a very important point race is that even if we take one step at a time, that is still an achievement and we need to celebrate those kinds of, of steps. An important takeaway that we also had is that building capacity has to be continuous and deliberate. And that includes honing our communication skills to reach more audiences. Um, which leads us to the second point about whether we feel these resources were effective. Um, in general, we did, um, although we, we noted that sometimes the choice of the, the media becomes the message. The choice of where you put your content um, dictates who it reaches to and the tone of that, of that messaging. So, for example, we felt that um, the, because the, the, the podcast was hosted in the Danish Water Forum website or so, it limited the, the reach of, of the message. Whereas if it were hosted somewhere else, more popular medium perhaps, it could have reached more audiences. Um, Maria made a very important point about striking a balance between sounding smart, you know, as you know, scientists and engineers and technical people, but also being relatable. And being relatable can be achieved through various ways. One of them can is uh, through having an emotional hook and discussing stories from the point of view of certain characters, which we felt the BBC um, uh, video re did extremely well. Niti also made a very important point about how the personal story, as in the Crisis of Crisis blog article, making it personal makes it credible. And if you back it up with data and research, it even becomes more credible. On the last point, we feel that over time, when story, the first time an issue comes out, fear mongering is natural. We've seen that with the pandemic, for example, when the pandemic first broke out, everyone was fearful. The media was hyping up the fear, how scary it is. But over time, as we understand issues and these problems more and more, as we do research, as we find solutions, media's messaging also tempers fear mongering. Suddenly there's hope, suddenly there's optimism. So it's up to us to find those new angles, new solutions, so that we don't become too pessimistic in our communication and we turn over to the more optimistic side. Um, we also did not specify on the final question any specific critical readings. We said there's too many to mention, <laughs> too many books, too many articles um, to read. But we emphasize that there is a need for a multiplicity of perspectives. Um, as Keith mentioned during his talk, what we see as the final content in these readings, in these materials, has undergone a thorough editorial process. We don't know what has been vetted and we don't know what has been left out. So we'd like to see, um, for example, the source or IWA be more conscious about how it uh, it, it's transparency in, in putting out these kinds of opinions and um, articles. We also mentioned that perhaps it's time not just for the experts to be doing the talking, but also the public at large. And citizen science can be a good way to start that. Um, it engages them more. It gives us the point of view of the, of the common person on the street, so to speak. And it raises more public awareness. So uh, thanks to my teammates for a wonderful discussion. Thank you, Yale, for your wonderful sharing. And I think it's very comprehensive and you have uh, put a lot of thoughts on uh, during this short time. Uh, I'm glad that you, uh, your group members have uh, read uh, 
probably all of the sources and uh, I think your opinions are very uh, much appreciated. So next uh, we will invite uh, the spokesperson from room three, share with us what you have uh, learned from your discussions. Uh, yes, hello. I think we have for yeah. uh, Irina. Hi. Yeah, hello, my name is Ira uh, and I'll be speaking for my group. I first of all want to thank all the participants, including Tanya, Michelle and Hark. We really had a lively and engaging discussion uh, because I think one of the reasons for that was that we come from different backgrounds and we managed to kind of uh, share different perspectives on the questions. So both from academia and the field, for example. And so I just made uh, some bullet points that um, uh, helped us uh, answer the questions and I don't know we we didn't have this kind of structured discussion touching upon each and every question but when we when we were having the discussion I think we just uh, covered all the questions automatically and yeah that was just more of a natural conversation and so speaking about the main takeaways I would like to say that uh, we mentioned that uh, it's very uh, when it comes to communication in general, it's really important to focus on different um, kinds of audience, uh, convening, convening different messages in different types of content and uh, depending, on, depending on the background of the person, for example. Uh, then we also mentioned that uh, it's sometimes not easy for all the people to access all the sources of information, depending on the situation, for example, uh, like crisis situation, let's say. And yeah, another important issue that we discussed uh, was about the importance of um, sharing the information that comes from the ground, from the field, uh, from, from the people who actually are going through uh, a type of problem like like water problem or or some other ones uh, so yeah I think these were the main points that we were talking about but again we had a more of a natural kind of discussion so yeah sorry if it's not that comprehensive and yeah thank you oh, that's great that's good enough okay thank you Arina okay I'm glad that uh, each group has a, an effective uh, discussion in the first part of our uh, breakout room sessions. In this part, I, I think I believe you have your own uh, opinions uh, about effective communications. And we are uh, in, in this part, uh, in, during this open uh, discussion session, uh, I hope you can uh, discuss the water stories you heard from the first day of the forum or your own stories, your own water stories. What Maybe it, it could be a story that you read or watched on the um, on the TV on the internet. What impressed you the most? What do you feel strongly that uh, you want to uh, broadcast, or you uh, any piece of information that you think should be communicated? I thought it would be Yank as well because he is a, a a wonderful storyteller. Um, oh, yeah. I can see that. Hi, yes. Yang. Do you have? A yeah, sure. I, I thought I'd, I'd get the discussion started. Um, so at, at yesterday's session A, which was the earlier session, all three speakers I felt were, were very, very compelling. But I very much enjoyed the way that Professor uh, Shin, uh, Dong Shin uh, presented uh, the research on uh, cities um, and climate vulnerability. Um, what a surprising takeaway from for me was the the differences in city vulnerability can be broken down according to several factors. There's political, there's environmental. Um, sometimes we are we we only automatically look at the city's available water resources, and basically the research said that this is not the only factor. There's so many other things that complicates the story of climate change and and city planning. Um, what I also liked from that research is the idea that some cities may stand to benefit from climate change, which for me is surprising. Um, 
and I and I and I and and we had to ask what does that mean? And there was a very good explanation for that. You know that um, some cities um, just might find, uh, say, uh, additional aug augmented water supply or an opportunity to improve their technology or infrastructure base. That's why it can be an opportunity. But knowing hearing from our speakers today, Keith and Max, if we presented that kind of research to the media, I think what they would pick up is that city of Guangzhou will benefit from climate change or city of this will benefit from climate change, have no incentive to act against climate change. And that's, I, I think as water professionals, we need to protect our message from that kind of twisting that can happen um, in, in popular media. Um, so uh, for me, it's, it's a compelling story, but also it's important for us when we bring out these stories to, to the public to own the story and control the narrative from start to finish. Thank you for sharing that, Yang. Inesh, I'm calling you out. What is your take on this? Um, from my side, I have to say that I'm just trying to figure out how I get to learn about what is going on. <laughs> and that is why this whole thing came about because I was reading a lot of stories that would shock me. I mean, I remember when I read the the, the young story, for example, when, when I read it, I, I wrote him immediately because I was like, oh, I'm so happy that you wrote this. Now I know a little bit more about you know what is going on. Um, but I kind of feel like if it was someone else writing it that I didn't know, um, maybe I would not connect to it so much. And this is me being like very honest and that's not fair. <laughs> and so what do I seek from a story? Is it facts? No, it's a connection because, and then hopefully the connection is supported with facts. <laughs> um, but we do have to open ourselves more to acquire this, this new experiences that everyone is feeling and these new solutions and inspirations for new designs. Um, and that is where I'm sitting right now. So I'm actually hoping that what I'm hearing from this session will help me make sense of how we'll approach all the articles that I'm reading because I get fascinated also by a lot of things at the same time. You know, this article about art and and the the implication and its connection. Uh, I mean, my mom she's an artist, and and so in my head it's like, wow, this is incredible. You know, the work that she does at, in schools with connecting students with water can really make a difference in the future votes and democracy of the country, and and that cannot be overlooked when we try to communicate with the with population, right? Um, so to be honest, I'm kind of lost in the middle of all the, the information and trying to share that with you guys. So I'm not sharing like a, um, a conclusion. I'm sharing that I feel a bit lost. <laughs> That's what I, I can do. Um, and yeah, um, but I don't know, were there also, um, you guys, have you ever felt the urge of writing something? I mean, young, of course, uh, you did. And you actually did it, but um, I just wrote my first article and it was for a Danish magazine. So it's in Danish and it was about the importance of um, leadership in, in the water sector and connection between seniors and young water professionals. Uh, but I was wondering from your side, if you guys have lived something that made you want to, yeah, um, write a story. I can see here that Mango I think has Mango. Mm -hmm. Yes, perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much for giving this opportunity to, to join you today, even though I missed yesterday for the walk. But um, uh, I, I have a story um, about the water. You know, I, I'm from Zambia. Have you been to Africa before? If I may ask? Okay, I'm from Zambia, Africa. And... Um, our setup of the water system is quite different because most, most of the rural and urban areas we use, um, uh, we call them potholes, uh, holes where we just dig and we drain water from them. And 
it's quite strange that um, with a global uh, with a global going around the world right now, the 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 system is quite changing every day with the with the, with the, the new implementation of the the SDG that we have to eat up to 20, 20, 30, 20, 35, some of that ten years from now, twenty thirty. Um, I'm looking at I'm looking into a solution that will we we will help the boreholes that we we do uh, dig from uh, places to places because um, at some point those boreholes they tend to dry you know and um, on, on on a story that we talk about the community um, uh, the connection between like my my, my friend there the, the the connection between the community the politicians and the environmentalists is not quite so stable because um they are coming from different different backgrounds that uh, they don't understand if I talk about water they'll think like I'm crazy or something because water is, is something that is given naturally from God that's how we take it from here but if we can have a community engagement that people can talk about it and uh, synthesize to the community that water you're supposed to reserve water and um, the water sector it has in our country is not something that we 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 put as a P1 but we put it like um, it's just something that we we talk about like that we are discussing right now okay um, I like I like the word the 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 previous lady I think I don't know where she's from uh, the way she's putting that she's lost. Uh, same as I'm lost, but um, I've learned something that from the from the team group that had joined there. Thank you. Thank you so much for your points. I just want to remind the group that we have a young uh, uh, posted uh, uh, information about a, I think it's a magazine called Water Sense and Policy. Uh, it regularly features water environment inspired work, works of art, mainly. Uh, follows good way to engage the public. So I just want to remind people that um, it's a good resource. Okay, yeah, Michelle, what would you like to add? I I have a question actually. <clears throat> um, uh, it's question? maybe a question for Ines and Young, but maybe other people will also have the feeling that I'm struggling with. So sometimes I have a lot of ideas in my in my mind and things that I want to bring out to the world that I want to write down in a blog post or something like that. But then I'm always afraid that I will not reach a lot of people or that I will not get feedback and I'm just putting something in the air with no response. And then I'm afraid that I will lose my motivation to keep doing it. No, no, please, Michelle, don't do that. <laughs> No, 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 no. Don't think about that step, the step of actually writing it. I mean, to be honest, uh, what was hard for me was actually to be brave enough because I was second guessing all the time that people would, maybe I would write something and, and maybe I didn't mean it in a certain way, but people would twist, twist, twist it. So those were actually my concerns or, or that I was not getting the correct source or, you know, in the end, you know, <laughs> But this is my philosophy. I mean, if, if one person got inspired by it, I mean, wasn't it already worth it? And, and, and I do understand, like, you know, we are looking for massive. No, but we're not. You know, it's not about massive connection. It's about connection, right? So I'm very confused in a lot of things. But I have to say that in that, I'm very clear <laughs> that, that if it's one person, 10, uh, I'm just... I wish I could say that some podcast that I did touch three people, you know, or that inspired them to do something different. Um, I think the process of creation and writing, it's, yeah, that's also what it should feed you and, and get you further understanding, almost like an organization of thoughts that you go through while writing that then you can use to, to build on your career. So. Okay, we will keep in touch. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, Michelle, you asked a question I also struggle with um, because we have limited time and uh, it's all about passion, responsibility, uh, your interest. Uh, uh, so if you feel passionate to, during the writing process, I think it's something worthwhile to be published or to be expressed, uh, I mean, uh, uh, delivered to other people. 
Um, and even if uh, very limited people read or uh, uh, respond, I think that you will enjoy the process. But if you write feeling very painful during the process, then I will think it won't be a, a very good strategy uh, during the communication process. Yeah. Can I add one more thing? <laughs> I think that also sometimes, for example, for water professionals, there are some facts that are corresponding to any times, right? And sometimes there are some, some, some pieces of information that are relevant to now. As we know, and this is actually the theme of the forum, how young water professionals can be leading uh, the water sector through disruptive change. So I think it's also important to remind ourselves that this is my opinion for today. It may change in one year because I'm still evolving, I'm learning. The world is so rapidly changing that I'm coming out of my comfort zone, but my opinion may change. You know, in one year, it may, it may not be relevant, but at least I've made that step. It's good to remember and remind ourselves that the world is changing and we need to act upon it. What do you guys think? I'd, I'd like to add to that because I, I can relate with what you just said, Michelle, about um, being, being afraid to put something out there, whatever that is. It could be a blog article, it could be a simple post. Um, and, and for me, uh, it also could be related to, to uh, to my art, to my hobby, to music, uh, which obviously I, I do. Um, but the great thing about the IWA I've come to learn over the years of engaging with the emerging water leaders is that there's so many people ready to help you. I, and, and I would not have had you know, the, the, the traction I've had with writing for, um, for the IWA blog or for the source, for example, if I did not get that support along the way. And the support that IWA will be giving you is not is not the it, it's the critic it's not even criticism the critique that you get is all positive and and building up, so when they give you back to you comments and edits on your blog post, it's all feedback is a gift and I and I've come to treasure that process of of the IWA the fact that they offer us young water professionals this unique opportunity and, and platform we should take advantage of it but remember that only the bold will take on that opportunity so take that first step submit your first article even if it goes through five revisions which I assure you my first article probably <laughs> did <laughs> Um, but it is that process of learning. And the, the sooner that you do that, the sooner you'll overcome your fears. Thank you for sharing that, Young. Thank you. That's such a precious piece of advice, I think, for anyone to relate to that. Irina, there are your takes on creating, communicating certain messages or stories. Any reflections of what you've heard? Yeah, thank you for the discussion and for the question. Uh, so I personally think I'm not a really good example of um, uh, like sharing and communicating because I don't have that much of experience in that. Um, but I think that this is what every person has to learn and has to some like somehow uh, somehow do even even if it doesn't reach a wide audience, even if you communicate something that bothers you and something that um, that is important to you, to your closest uh, like circle, you know, to your maybe friends or family, that's already something. And yeah, I think that's, um, uh, that also concerns the, uh, the, water, the water sector. Thank you for sharing. Of course. And, you know, uh, we are here to connect to, to chat and we've got here um, uh, on the call some, I would say, experienced young quarter professionals already, but they were, all, they were also in the beginning of their career doubtful themselves and they are still, it's a creative process, tapping into, into for example, water sector. So thank you so much. I, I will pass to Hugh J for final remarks of mm -hmm. our gathering. Yeah, so our workshop only lasts for uh, less than two hours, but I think the discussions can continue and go beyond this workshop. 
Uh, today, we're very glad to have uh, two speakers who, uh, who give our, uh, a lot of thoughts uh, uh, from uh, a media perspective. And I think our uh, all wonderful participants have uh, uh, very effective discussions in the breakout rooms. And also after that, we come back and share our uh, own world stories. How can we communicate more effectively as uh, young world professionals? I think everybody uh, has a lot of uh, uh, takeaways from this workshop and I hope uh, you all enjoyed uh, this, this discussion. Huge thank you to every single one of you and to all of you together for coming, for bringing so many insights, inspiring sharings, your backgrounds, your diversity. It's, it's really important to get together and to talk about the topics that are relevant to the bigger picture, but also to us personally. We'll be concluding the forum with networking sessions. Um, as you know, uh, we have two sessions per each day. We'd love to have you there. We'd love to hear from you. It's going to be more of a casual gathering, something that we would have in front of a coffee machine or sharing drinks when it comes to in-person events. So we look forward to seeing you there. And uh, let's stay in touch. Let's connect and uh, let's continue the discussions either on IWA Connect or LinkedIn We'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much, everyone. Hopefully see you tomorrow. Uh, I have to say that I'm just thrilled to hear both of these presentations because I kind of feel like they really answer to what we were trying to propose when we envisioned the workshop in the first place. Because in the beginning, you know, just to share, this was kind of a, um, driven by kind of a feeling like, do we all feel like we need some sort of new awareness of how to communicate water? And and it it seems like we do, and it seems like there's something to talk about. I already feel among friends. Uh, perfect. Because I was hearing you talk about um, the the different ways, the different medias, and the different how we need to think about the audience, all of this. But I was wondering if you have noticed throughout your career that the different generations are somehow bringing something new into the way that we communicate, not only media, but I mean, in the intention. Have you seen a change over time? Is the younger generation coming with some sort of new intention on how they want to talk about water? Or is it the same and we are all aligned on what we actually need to say currently? I, I would, I think what, you know, clearly is different is what I said to um just how the world is is different um today in that um you know, younger generation you, you would have communicated to much more locally you would have commuted you would have communicated with you know, your friends your local network you'd have might have joined a local environmental organization um you know the the opportunities to connect with like-minded people around the world you know full well are, are vastly different and you can have um, you know, much more specific conversations. You can really focus on issues that are really of interest to you, and and that that that's the the great thing about it is that you just have such an opportunity to connect with um, with with like like minded people. So I think that you know that that makes it different. Um, there are you know there's a real richness of of, of issues. There's a great understanding of of problems people are just you, know, you, you could be so vastly aware of the um of what's going on clearly that's the challenge as, as you've put it, said at the start where you're bombarded with so many sources but i think to um you just have to turn that around and look at that um uh, the, the from the opposite direction just say what a fantastic um opportunity that that is because um um, you know, if, if you can be concerned about your local environment and your local river and your local what, whatever, your local drinking water, your local beaches, but to connect far more easily and readily with people who are sharing those issues and concerns in different places is, is what's is what's different. So I think the, the topics aren't necessarily um, different. There have always been um, people have had environmental concerns, but, um, you know, it's feeding off that ability to connect with other people is really what's radically different. Yeah, yeah, I, I can see that. I, I would share that from 
when I try to read and to connect with my fellow young world professionals and hear their experiences. And again, now aligned with what Max was saying that it's important that we also focus on a solution in the end, right? Present a solution to this problem. And, it, and because now currently we are focusing a lot on community driven solutions, driven solutions, then it can be that the solution that is being used is actually very specific to that site and great that it is, you know, uh, and then it's more difficult to translate or to transpire to other parts. Um, not all the time true, it can be that we drag some inspiration from that. And that's where I feel that we have the opportunity here, is that to know that somewhere else in another part of the world, there is someone trying to do something that we are also trying to build to our community and maybe face some challenges to create that link with the community. And all of those learnings and those processes we can take from. So maybe it's not all the time the solution, but also the process, I would say. Um, and 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 that's where I think it becomes personal and that this connection that comes, it's, it's also from, from, from a inspiration and from a, um, the I think that communicating these sort of stories allows us to link with each other and inspire each other so that we feel like we are moving as a whole. What, and we feel like this incremental change that we were talking about yesterday feels some sort of more, it feels stronger. Right, that, that's how I feel it, it, it gets translated to us. Um, perfect, I will stop talking and I will open the floor to um, all of our lovely uh, attendees. So do you have any questions? Very open to allow you to, to just, you know, open the mic and, and make your own question. Yes, okay. Jan? Yes? Um, hi, I'm uh, Jan from Germany. Um, I'd like to ask you, Keith, um, if, in the future, we might need to feed other channels more than we did before. So for example, of course, as an IWA member, I received the Source magazine every month, I think, or two months, and I, I really appreciate it. Uh, but um, I also received those magazines from the from the national organizations here in Germany in the water sector and so on, and it's too much information to read it all and of course um you you read the specific articles you're interested in but this is maybe one article or at least me i i ha maybe have the time to read one article per um magazine i i receive and i think to to reach a broader um auditory and uh, especially uh, non-specialist um, auditory, so the, the normal public uh, auditory. I think, uh, what do you think um, is the right way to reach them? So I think I just um, checked uh, how many followers the IWA channel has on Instagram. And currently we have 2,100 followers. And I think today that's not very much, at least to, to reach a big auditory. And probably most of the followers are IWA members. And I think maybe to, I, I know that we will um, yeah, lack information if we go into those formats, but um, because we have this information overload, I think we need to think about new formats and to to reach a broader um, yeah auditory. So if we would more frequently post uh, Instagram stories about specific water topics, maybe that would be a way to to reach a broader auditory. Oh, uh, what's your opinion on this? <laughs> and and are you also responsible for the social media um, yeah, interactions or activities of IWA. Thanks very much, Jan. Uh, yes, as I think you'll appreciate, the, you know, what we can talk about and the number of people that we can um, try to connect with you know, is, limit, is limitless. Uh, really, there's just so, it, there's so many opportunities. Um, that's the good thing, that's the positive thing. Uh, in in my role, I am now responsible for the the social media core activity. Um, 
the you you mentioned the the Instagram and but even that is a I think that's a relatively new um, area of activity for us. Um, we've built on but we've built on more of what we've we have been doing on Twitter, what we've built in on um, LinkedIn. I think those are those you know platforms we're much further down the line. I, so I think it's a case of us yes extend into other networks we've got um our chinese office use wechat and you know they are you know tens and tens of thousands of people involved on the, in the wechat in china so um it's there's great possibilities there i think what we will so that's one thing we do ourselves uh, when i say ourselves i mean it's just centrally um but the big thing for us will be to be smarter work um you know in a much better way where say for example if we have an event we we'll make sure we're working with active participants yourselves but then it's about how you then feed out to your networks so we we can we should think aim to do more where we release materials that are then shareable rather than that, that it then spirals so of trying to feed a, a spiraling out of of those messages um that's i think is the way we're probably going to have the best um success but yes for me um it's about having a, a a plan to to expand what we do there's so much that can be um and done and that's why we're so excited to be working with the bbc that you know really um it's it's the it's bbc global news it's it's there they have the ownership of it but they're working in partnership um we add some authority to that, and it'll be great um, to have IWA's um, name much more visible. That's why we're so excited. There's you know, the really great opportunities um, around that. Um, but yeah, I mean, thanks, thanks for that. Um, and I, I, you know, feeding those in as suggestions, um, it's a, a work in progress. Plenty, plenty to do. I hope that's uh, helpful. Perfect. And I, I hope that you all, I, I actually just went on Instagram and started to follow IWA. Because, um, so so now it's there. Um, and I hope that you follow my lead. Uh, so we become slightly closer. Thank you so much, Ines. Yes, I was just about to mention um, our lovely guest speaker will be coming back to his uh, busy uh, daily routines and yes. schedules. We thank you so much, Keith, for joining us, for sharing these um, insightful pieces of information. No, it's a thank pleasure. You for, and thank and you I, for I coming. Just reiterate what Cassia says. I think you know working with this group to inform a communications work could be really, really, really useful. So, but anyway, I wish you really well with your forum. So, thank you very much for having me here. Thank you so much, Keith. Bye. Keith. That was really nice um and there are, i can see in the chat that we already have ideas so i'm actually in the iwa <laughs> program committee for the the conference coming here in denmark for 2022 and it looks like we have some ideas for a tiktok account i think why not uh, <laughs> if you were present in japan you, in the last edition of the world water congress and exhibition you will know that the hit was karaoke so we watch all the young water professionals sing and of course we know who was the best but still we also know <laughs> <laughs> that it's really fun to share these moments with future leaders and um you know to to allow us to connect even more so TikTok seems a good follow-up move on to the workshop let's do it yes, yes yes so the idea here is that we will be dividing you in breakout rooms and i would like you guys to discuss the five resources that you received which ones were the ones that actually touched you or not. And I'll, I'll dive a little bit uh, after. And then after that, we will discuss a little bit about how to communicate water stories and particularly our own. And, and I want us to go there and to touch that point, okay? So this will be the task for the first um, part of the workshop. So you guys will be divided into groups you will do a short round of introductions so you know who you're talking with and, and that we have some sort of information of background information of you. And then try to look at the different resources. What were the key takeaways? What made these eff effective sources of information? And did you have a critical opinion about it? Uh, did you develop any new knowledge or did you agree with what you're reading? Did you even thought about if you were agreeing with what you were reading? That's also a fun one. And then last but not least, if you have any other source of 
uh, reading that you had over the past months that you actually found interesting, you are also welcome to put that on the table. Okay, uh, select also a, a spokesperson. It can be that then after everyone can talk, it's just for now for us to have some sort of organization uh, to have a spokesperson, okay? And this person doesn't need to agree with the opinions of everyone. It, this person will be just in charge of kind of summarizing whatever was discussed in, in, in certain rooms. And uh, later on, we're going to exchange and, and learn and, and then again continue with a conversation. Uh, I hope that you have a fruitful conversation. Just share your opinions. We are among friends, guys, so just go for it. Uh, see you in 25 minutes. Hello, hello, welcome back. I can see smiles on your faces. It looks like you had really good discussions. Yes, good. And thank you for, for joining one of the sessions. If you could just identify who was the spokesperson for the first group. Let's see. Uh, Tarika and Cristiano were there. Uh, so we were three of us. So we said, okay, let's talk about as water professionals, how our communication should be with the general public. So uh, Christiana gave an example uh, from his work experience, like when there is a water scarcity in the city, uh, the, the public and citizens start to become panic. So as the municipality or governmental uh, professionals, uh, you need to communicate with the public and calm them down. So we discussed like how should be this communication with the public. And uh, we concluded, concluded that um, the transparency and having a clear communication with the public is very important. Um, try to make the public a part of the action that we are taking is very important. That would be like educating the public and guiding them how to contribute to water minimization or having like sharing the open calendar of water usage with people and make them a part of this um, process. And also, as the water professionals, um, what we can do is to demonstrate the results of our action. So if we would like to convince and engage with, with the public, uh, somehow we, we should be able to demonstrate and explain the results of our plans and actions. So, um, well, since I'm working on the modeling field, I, I, I was sharing my personal, my professional background. Um, like we can use models to demonstrate what's going to happen in the future and try to convince people how we should act uh, to be able to um, conserve water resources and um, so on. So these, these were the general discussions that we had in the breakout group one. Connection to, with people is um, definitely one of my passions and one of the things that I'm still figuring out what to do more specifically, who do we need to get in touch with? Because uh, is it that we need to get in touch with local um, authorities to make them more aware? Or is it that we, okay, let's give up on this. Let's just go for the next generation of people and go to schools and make sure that they, they will vote in a democracy that will you know, drive for change or more awareness uh, in water issues. Still debating this, um, but I think both are needed. Uh, and I do find arts and also some engagement uh, with modeling and visuals uh, a great way to do it, a great way to do it, regardless of the age. Um, it can be that we need to talk more about people who are not in the water sector. Um, and, and make them and bring them in, kindly bring them in without scaring them with like this whole like bad news, but kindly bring them in on on what they could do and, and that they can have an option here uh, to, to help us. Um, perfect. I will move to the second group and let's see how this goes. So if we go to the second room, uh, breakout room, who was the spokesperson? To be, to be honest, we didn't define that. Um, in the beginning, but I can do it. Um, yes, of course you can. Okay, so um, yeah, regarding the first questions, what the main takeaways uh, were, we um, we said that 
one takeaway that was that tackling problem is not easy and all the five resources had that in common and um, what they had in common as well was that problems um, are different all over the world but that the stories could be connected if if one want to um, and another takeaway was that um, the every story was placed on a different platform so in a different format we we had all formats in there so uh, a usual um, internet article then a blog um, a video a podcast and a scientific article and each of those formats um, yeah aims at a different audience and that you choose wisely what audience you want to reach and um, yeah choose the right format for this for the first did you question. get any feeling on what which one kind of touched you the most which one it, it was different was? so we said that um it's a pretty personal thing what format uh, touches an individual individually best so um i can say that the the bbc video uh got me most yeah it depends on also on the purpose why you choose one of the media so of course if you are a researcher or doing your phd you would probably prefer the scientific article since you want to quote it in your own studies and so on but um if you are a non-professional and um, you want to know something about the water sector then um, yeah maybe the video is the the most uh suitable format but i would like to go over to the second um story because it also um maybe it uh, gives an answer to to your story which was my um favorite and um, i always said that for me it was the um the video but in our group we um discussed that yeah everyone has has other um yeah favorites and but what we said what this what made all stories effective was a personal story that was yeah more or less um available everywhere at least in um the blog the video and um the the podcast so that were personal stories um, of yeah of humans of individuals and not general stories. Um, we think in our group that if uh, if an aspect is shortly presented, it's probably more suitable for both auditory. So the scientific article is yeah was pretty long and. Um, you have to be very interesting in the topic to read it completely. Um, and the longer it gets, the um, harder it will become to keep the people yeah, in it or at it. Another yeah, point um, what made the story effective, or at least the video story, was um, it... Um, it had a happy end in it. So in the end, there was water again in the Colorado River in, uh, in Mexico. Of course, you, you don't have always a happy end, but if you have it, um, I think the audience feels more um, yeah, comfortable with it. Um, sorry to 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 cut you but i kind of feel i was feeling a bit like oh is this like a, a disney 
uh, <laughs> consequence. Uh, but, then, <laughs> but then I thought, uh, maybe it's true because you can, you, you hear the problem and you hear a solution and you have this happy you know, feeling that maybe brings you inspiration. Not like internal peace in a sense that, okay, the issue is solved because I would believe that something well done would still raise awareness. Uh, if it didn't have that happy ending, then maybe it would be just like a weight, like one more thing, you know, like yeah. I'm working on this in the, my local work, in my job, and someone else is it, and they are also, you know, failing. God, no. Yeah, <laughs> to be honest, I, I didn't expect to get a happy ending there. <laughs> wow. Okay, that's nice. Yes. Well, uh, let me jump to the next group. We will have opportunity to continue talking. So the um, it's actually funny that you sort of ended on that point of talking about like having a solutions focused article because we talked about that for quite a bit. Um, and we had sort of different takes on it, but it's this idea. It's like you go to a lot of um, I know conferences or watch talks and things is, you know, not not naming names for like six. And there's a lot of like we have to do something, and very little like doing something. Uh, so uh, we kind of we kind of liked that notion of like having a, a an article end with a solution, and be like you said, having that sort of like inspirational way out. I was going to say that, yeah, it was the solutions focus. Um, we were really talking about, we talked a lot about uh, Jan's blog post. So at least we're all talking about different media sources. And yeah, it was like, what was, what like stood out to us was focus on solutions, um, um, reiterating some of like the main points like several times. Um, so it made it like really easy to, to digest. Um, and that like he was like, there was a lot of um, character uh, stuff within the story so like similar to what the bbc guy was saying like how it needs to be like a, a character-led story for us to be to be interested in it Pablo always also made that really good point around like the uh, and this was like one of keith's points earlier it was like the medium mm. that um mm. that these stories come to us in mm -hmm. yeah it was good that you guys sent us so many different mediums because <laughs> everyone's got like a different uh one that they they prefer um uh like whether you're a visual person or like better at learning from audio um uh and also like the accessibility of reading in english it's like um a lot of a lot of people in the world probably know how to like uh, hear and speak english maybe like the reading is not like um as strong and so having the the, the video or the audio is like maybe more accessible to like more international audiences yeah. It's really funny that you uh, point this issue because uh, <clears throat> one of the problems we had when selecting was that not all resources were available in all countries. Mm. And this true. was something that suddenly, I, it just, of course, I know this information, you know, but I'm just not aware of it. Like, yeah. I'm not aware of it in my daily life. <laughs> that this is a reality and that there is a limiting factor that I simply do not consider. Yep. Um, and we really try to be broad, but then, oh, but Spotify cannot whatever, or this one cannot whatever, this video cannot. And I'm like, what, what? Uh, no, what? Oh, oh yes, right, that's, that exists. <laughs> and um, so it's it's interesting how we also need to consider that in in the media selection somehow. Um, yeah. yeah, and definitely, I would like to add that also influencing the way that we want to reach any special populations of readers. You know, it's uh, we must to be critical about who wants the who who wants to be reached by this information, right? Yes. Very yeah, in, right? <laughs> yeah, it is because because I kind of feel like then do we need to make the exercise do because if if what we want to reach is people who are not even aware that maybe they want to be reached. And sorry if this is getting too much, but but it, you know it really demand demands a different exercise, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Do we have another group? Yes. 
Where so, are you joining us from? I am joining from um, Delhi, India. Delhi, nice. It's quite late here, and that is also one of the reasons why I would keep it short. The other reason why I would keep it short is because um, there wasn't much discussion that we could do in our group because uh, some of us were facing a lot of issues uh, with the network, and there wasn't very much clear sound. So, however, uh, we had um, Hatem, Saidi, and Jacob in our group, joining from Germany and Africa, and myself in India, based on what we could um, understand and hear from what we were speaking between all the interruptions of network and so on. Um, I would actually echo with uh, what Jan mentioned about the sort of diversity that you've tried to um, reach out with in terms of the resources. So the, the medium of resource, there's video, there's audio, there's scientific journal, uh, paper, blog post, and uh, the article of uh, Mr. Kala. Um, and I also really like the idea, and I actually appreciate it when there was a personal story that went along with the narrative or whatever was being communicated, the message. That is also the reason why I liked, um, and I think um, some other members in our group liked the YouTube video, particularly the story of Mexico. And um, as Ian mentioned, while I was watching it, I did not expect it to have a happy ending. And it was quite a surprise when, and actually a joyful surprise when there's water back into the Colorado River in that part of Mexico. Um, so while I was watching it, uh, there was some interesting ideas for research that I got for myself, which I think uh, I would implement in the coming days or weeks maybe. Um, but the other uh, opinion that I had was, and because we were discussing so much on communication uh, with what Keith discussed and uh, uh, the previous discussion based on the resources. Um, so recently, I and one of my colleagues or partners, uh, we got a project funded through Swiss Water Partnership and um, the project itself is, uh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to bring some personal work related stuff here, not no, so much. No, 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 sure. go ahead. So, Learning um, from the resources already. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the partner that I am working with, she was actually a physicist, but now she's a, a full-time practicing artist. And, uh, Again, a young uh, professional, so much, very much interested in water. I myself, I'm a researcher, urban planner, working in water and sanitation. So the project is sort of an intersection in between science, arts, and technology. Um, we are trying to simplify water knowledge through visualization, if I can put it in a sentence. That's what it is. Um, but we, Right at that point, through a process of design thinking, and we conducted surveys of students across the world, we had a, a few hundred responses. And um, the, the very critical issues I think that I would like to mention here, one is that uh, young people, I mean, not our age, but even younger ones, they do not know what to do about water and climate change, how these two are connected, how, how and what they can do to mitigate um, the issues that may arise because of climate change. This, I think, uh, is not an issue about education because most, I think most uh, curriculum around the world capture um, water and environmental education, even at the school level. I mean, I remember learning it way back in my school. So currently the consciousness and awareness is much higher. However, the issue lies in communication. Um, students are taught what is climate change. Students are taught the issues that may arise because of climate change. But, and they are taught of, in, in silos, they're taught about, you should turn off the tap, you shouldn't use a lot of water, conserve water and so on. But they're not 
communicated well as to how their daily actions transform or manifest into something much bigger crisis, maybe a urban flooding or um, um, water scarcity, as we saw the case of Johannesburg a few years ago. So there is a disconnect between knowing, which is you know the theory of water and climate change, and uh, practicality of it in implementing. So this is what we tried. We are trying to bridge uh, through our work in uh, Swiss Water Partnership. Um, the second issue that we identified is, again, coming from the surveys that we did, uh, language and accessibility. Accessibility, of course, in terms of language and then the accessibility in terms of a wider network. So making it online or offline, because most people, uh, so I have a mentor in, um, um, US, the other one in Switzerland. So both of them gave suggestions that it would be a good idea to convert it into something that goes offline. Uh, it could be digital, but still offline because even in US, um, there are areas which are not very well connected with internet. So these are the two major observations that I got uh, while watching and reading the resources. I could not read all five or I'll go through all five. I, um, so I read three of them, saw two or saw one of them. So this is uh, it, I think. Which ones did you read? Sorry, I'm just, uh, so it was the, the video, the art ones, or you didn't go through that one completely or? So I missed out the podcast entirely because uh, I couldn't find time. I watched the video uh, and I really loved the video actually because it's so much a story of perseverance yeah. uh, and hope. And um, I saw, I read the article of uh, Kalavaya Art. Murti on yeah. uh, Kala, what, yeah. intermittent water supply and the blog post by Yang. The blog, yeah, perfect. And I skimmed through the paper uh, because as I mentioned, the project that we are doing is um, at the intersection of art, sciences, and communication. Yes. And me being a researcher and uh, urban planner, my partner is an artist, scientist. So yes. it sort of fits well into yes. our Yes, no, 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 I completely, I was also thrilled about that. Yeah, perfect. Well, I think we're done with doing a round of the groups and uh, and I allowed people to talk here because I kind of feel like this is how we understand people and we understand where are they coming from and and what worries people and and what can where which points of commonality do we have more about how to develop the water stories because now we went through the process of thinking okay we had these different resources these ones were the ones that we believed touched us the most or made more sense now it's about what stories we would like to share um is there something maybe from day one that we really like that we would like to write a piece about? Would we prefer to write an opinion piece or do we want to talk about a personal story? Um, and, and then we'll go deeper a little bit on how we can make those stories a little bit more compelling. I was um, wondering, I had a personal story that I had to talk to about, like I met, it, it was bothering me so much that I, I, I needed to put it into, um, you know, like I needed to say it, you know, I'm not to classify people, but I'm Southern European and I needed to take it out of my system, you know. <laughs> so, and it was about how um, my experience as a PhD student, which, for example, is not the same as Pavel has. And every time I talk with Pavel, I'm like, oh, there's a different size of academia that I didn't know. But my experience with academia was that I could only graduate if I had X number of papers and having X number of papers was better than having a good experience or a good research, yeah, overall. And, and that was not a good point. And, um, and I think that um, unfortunately, there's a lot of other PhD students who go through this process of having to just publish. And I've worked with, IWA and some of the members that are here present, like like Jacob Amenger and Young, who was in the earlier session on on how to bring research closer to practice, 
um, but for me, telling and doing work on this topic is really important. Being vocal about it is really important and, and protecting the next generation of young water researchers is really important to me. So I had to write about it. So I did, I finally wrote about it and, and but it's in Danish. So, you know, I was still a bit limited in my audience. It will, one day it will come. I still have an email from Casia asking for a piece <laughs> on my email box for, yeah, uh, a lot of time. Uh, but I'm wondering if anyone here in the room kind of had like either a personal story or was inspired by something that would, that made him or her feel like, oh, I should, I should write something about this. Yes, I, of course, Jake. Yeah. I think um, uh, during the pandemic, I was actually thinking about this um, to kind of write stories about how young water professionals um, can rise to the ranks, looking at the challenges that exist I mean the non-technical challenges and how to even handle them because um, there are a lot of us that have gone through the same thing and have come out successful. And we can share our experiences for other young people to learn about. So that is something that has been using in my mind to write something about. But just for me to understand, Jacob, did you end up writing about it or did you just felt like writing, but you haven't done it? Yeah, I felt like writing, but I've not done it. <laughs> yeah, but is it because of lack of time? Do you feel like you don't have enough information? Is it resources? Is it confidence? Where is it? Yeah, I think it's, um, I would say, let me say resources, because I feel it shouldn't come from one person. It should come from only my perspective. It should be like the perspective from other young water professionals in other parts of the world, and then in other sectors in the water industry. So that is why I've not written it yet, because I, it's kind of, it should be a group something, or I have to consult other young water professionals. And because of time. I see. I see. Well, now we know that uh, I hope that uh, that by the end of this workshop, you realize that either the way is here also to support and to provide resources, either with this connection with BBC, with Max directly or the source. And again, you're always welcome to actually contact me or Cassia if you want to, you know, pursue or, or gain more insight on how to connect and, and write a piece. And it can be a blog, it can be something that we can share IWA Connect. So it's there's a lot of possibilities that we can do. And, and remember that once the piece is out, to be honest, it really doesn't matter if it is to start in the source or to be in a blog post like, like Young's article, right? It will be out there and if it's relevant and interesting people will connect to it right and, th and that's that's the starting point uh, and then you start to develop a narrative because in in my head what happens is that i i, I write something and that when i write that piece and the piece is out i maybe already do not agree with a hundred percent of what i'm reading and that's okay right because you are building your rationale and you're building your your thought process about that um, experience or, or 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 opinion, right? You're still developing it, and I hope that you know. I hope that I don't have the same opinion today that I'll have, you know, in ten years, <laughs> and 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 that's the growth. Um, and and it will just add up, add up, add up as as life goes, and you gain new perspectives of life at personal level, but also at in your career and in contact with others. You will add to the narrative, and by the end of your career, you will have a very solid story. I'm sure. Anyone else would like to share like any um, moments where they felt compelled to to write or to be vocal about their their take on the sector? Uh, I mean, like when it comes for the experience of mine with respect to the water and stories, I can uh, like I can divide them into different categories. So I've worked in uh, rural water supply, climate action, and the climate change with respect to remodeling. And currently, I'm working with urban waste urban waste water systems. So for which story, I should say first, 
and I have a very personal story when it comes for water quality and uh, chronic kidney disease, uh, which is like a significant disease in Sri Lanka and as well as in India and uh, in South Asian countries. And uh, what I really liked uh, when, you, as it was like the dialogue was going around with communication, uh, I really liked the. Uh, I'm not sure about the uh, the podcast and the uh, in, uh, the materials that you are mentioning, but I really liked. Uh, I followed the uh, water diplomacy course, which which was uh, given by IUC. So in that they had like different segments, and I really liked out of those. I really liked. Uh, I really like the podcast that they had about Nile River Basics, where they have put up all the people from communities from different countries, different nations along the Nile River Basin, share about their beams with their country's like uniqueness. Like they had the uh, the sounds of the drums and they had the water bodies gasping and everything. So it's really interesting, and I really like the other like apart from the vlog and. Uh, that's something else. I really like the storytelling component that they had, and they have shared the story uh, storytelling uh, which which was there at uh, Bentley. I guess uh, I'm not I'm not too sure about the uh, names. Uh, so that was very interesting. So I really like the stories that they are going to uh, showcase with that storytelling and the uh, podcast. When it comes uh, for the for one of my experience of putting these uh, water diplomacy into action, I really like to. Uh, I really like to like say uh, I was uh, like I was lucky enough to get a grant to give uh, to give water supply to get uh, to get people connected for a water supply scheme in Sri Lanka. So in that area, there is a group of indigenous people who are living. So we have an idea of having of putting up a video, putting up a water diplomacy with them. Uh, about uh, how do they feel about water and what are they going to work with respect to water. And with respect to the first uh, point that we discussed about the involvement of scientists, artists, politicians and citizens. Uh, so when it comes for water supply, it's good. So people are like, uh, people are happy to get them connected for water as it is water is a necessity. But when it comes for the urban wastewater, the situation is like dramatic. It's a dilemma. So it's very hard for people to get connected. It's very hard for people to get negotiated when it comes for the urban wastewater. So in that respect, the role of, uh, I should say not politicians, the, ro ro the role of the government or the municipal officers are significant. So that particular role that they have to pay, like if they have played correctly if because at the end there should be the bridge in between the respective water organization and the citizens or the people so they should be able to negotiate they should be able to persuade they should be able to give the message that we wanted to have for them with the people uh, i say i should say uh, rather correct communication they should have the effective communication with respect to the organ and being and be a bridge with people with the organization and with the people Yes, uh, I, thank you for for sharing all these different stories. You really should uh, try to 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 have some time to write some of these ideas and and share it with us. Either you know, I I do think that blog posts would work very well, and then just share it on either of the way connect, and then we'll be able to read about them, and you know, it will start to generate some conversation. And if we come around and create a couple of resources it might be that we can create a iwa connect um, a gathering just going through the resources that are generated for example uh from young war professionals that could Absolutely. be really cool Absolutely. to kind of have to go through the process of creation what happened what didn't happen and things like that yes yeah Tarika, you touched upon indigenous communities and i could see emily just her face was brightening because yeah. i think that she's very much interested in that topic and in fact she wanted to organize a gathering um of young quarter professionals about about indi indigenous communities because she's originally from australia so we could yes. be definitely in touch um with regards to that, because uh, there is a lot of knowledge and wisdom coming from indigenous communities and their uh, their connection to also. water. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. And their connection Much. to water. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I would want to really thank to everyone who has joined. We, so, guys, now I will ask Cassia to please stop sharing the screen.
uh, I can see Pavel is great sharing the link to Tarika to be able oh. to share her word, being inclusive, you, going around technology. Yes, we're all in the end of the day engineers. Um, and, and let's um, take a group photo, if that's okay with you guys. What do you guys think? I have to say that we do have a, a catch non-official phrase for this uh, <laughs> Emerging World Leader Forum, right, Emily? We do have a one word because it's a hashtag word. Hashtag. It's a hashtag, so it's only one word. It's do not hold back. Do not hold uh, back, courtesy. exactly. Yeah, courtesy of the first panel session. <laughs> yes, exactly. Do not hold back. This is our motto, and I feel like that will give you uh, some energy to, you know, stand in our stories, believe in them, understand that there is a growth in our rationale. So do not be afraid to put out what you think today. Uh, and do not worry about how many people you will need to inspire. Of course, frame the audience and all of that and think about the medium. But uh, in the end of the day, if you connect with one person, two, three, ten, if you can inspire anyone across the globe, it's a win. Uh, so count on that. I do believe that if you are here, it's because you have a story to tell <laughs> and that's, that's it. Right. So let's go for, um, for a group photo. Kasia, will you take care of that? Would you take the lead? Yes. Uh, all right, everyone, anyone else wants to turn on their cameras? Jacob, maybe? No. Uh, or anyone else? If uh, if so, um, let us just uh, wait a few more seconds and uh, get ready. Think about something nice and smile. Think about what you're taking away from this session. And uh, yeah, let's do it. We Is got it. Completed? it. Perfect. It's beautiful. <laughs> so many beautiful faces. We all froze. Yes. Perfect, guys. <laughs> uh, have a good rest of the day. Thank you for joining. Remember that tomorrow we have a session on networking and you know how important that is so that we stay connected and we keep each other accountable in this journey and inspiring others as well. Okay, so I look forward to see you tomorrow in the network session. Yes. Thank you so much, everyone. Perfect. Lovely Thank you, you so much. Thank Bye -bye. you, everyone. See you Bye. tomorrow. Bye. Bye.